Hey, welcome back to Hub. I have Jeff Beamer here ready to talk with you guys again about what is happening in the market right now. And he also has to talk about his trades that he's done over the past couple of weeks here on the channel. A couple of those were really good. Jeff, what are you doing today, buddy? Oh, man, we're looking at a very busy week with the markets. We have over 2,600 stocks that are having earnings announcements this week. We're kind of in the heat of that right now. We do have jobs reports coming up. So let me just jump in and start talking about the broader indexes uh, that we're kind of starting with today, beginning with Spider Index Trust. Uh, boy, look at this chart. This is uh, six months worth of data here, and it is almost straight up. But it is also almost a, a, almost a perfect Elliott Wave pattern. If we put up this pattern here, we see that the stock is in the middle of what we call a Wave 3, and that's for the SPY. That's the biggest, most powerful wave, but we're looking for a little pullback. Now, I know people have been talking about pullbacks and the market dropping um, as some sort of bad event, but actually it's part of a bigger pattern. I just saw today that many of the big investment houses came out with a lot of their targets for uh, the markets. And I believe it was Oppenheimer came up with a target of 490 on Spider or 4,900 on the SPX. And take a look at our reading here with our Elliott Wave target, which is right in the middle at 485. So I could not agree more. So where are we in relation to maybe starting this pullback? Well, if I take Elliott Wave off and I pull up my uh, Hike and Ashi candles, here's what I wanna point out. And let me zoom in on this just a little bit. And you'll see this little pattern here developing where I call it a wiki pattern. All right, this wiki pattern is when you have wicks on the tops and bottoms of the candles. And that usually indicates a change in direction. Now, again, I don't think it's going to be a big drop. I think we should just pull back down to that wave four target down here before the next advance target upwards. All right. That would just be a good, healthy market, a good, healthy pattern uh, to uh, begin the uh, month of August with, really. So um, let me kind of go back to my candles here, and then we will take a look at the NASDAQ because uh, those have been, you know, the NASDAQ, well, it's kind of doing the same thing. And so when we pull up uh, the cues here, which will take just a second as uh, apparently, I move a little faster believe. than my chart does. No, yeah, go ahead. I can't believe I can't believe how accurate the Elliott wave, that wave five, predicted exactly what Oppenheimer was saying. How often does that happen, Jeff? That was crazy when you pulled that up. The way it happened when you pulled that up, that was so cool to see that relation. And you pulled it up, you're like 490, and then I looked at that chart up there, hit it right on the button right there, 48, 40, well, that's 490. You know, that's, that's that's really cool. That's Jeff. a target, right? And, yeah. you know, that's a target and we'll see what, it, you know, if it comes through. But yeah, I mean, it, the bulls are definitely in force. And we see on the cues here on the NASDAQ, a similar pattern that we're starting to trade a little sideways and maybe expecting a little pullback. Now, this all depends on some big earnings announcements that we have this week with some NASDAQ related stocks. And I'll show those here in just a moment. But you can see that for the past week or so, we've been trading sideways. And if we put an Elliott Wave count on, it would do the same thing. You can see the beautiful, uh, the beautiful pattern here. Here's here. Oops, sorry. I, I moved a little fast here for for the uh, uh, for my um, drawing tool to come up. So there's the one. There's the two. And then we come over here for the three and you see this big three, that wave coming in. Well, what we would expect is for that pullback, same thing on the Qs, all right, that we had on the, on the SPY. So earnings are going to really uh, tell us whether it's, we're going to get that pullback or not. Otherwise, we are in the midst of a big wave three upwards and that is where the market is headed. It's headed up for right now. Now, let me talk a moment about uh, the bonds. You know, interesting, if you look over here, you'll see that TLT today, uh, which is the long end of the curve, had a very bad day, 
okay, down quite a bit uh, on, uh, on the day. And com in comparison to the SHY, which was, so TLT was down 1.91%. TLT is the 10 year long into the curve. SHY is the one to three year treasuries. It was only down 35 basis points today. All right, now the reason that that is significant is that that is going to increase the spread between the long end of the curve and the short end of the curve. We have an inverted yield curve. Yeah, as of yesterday, it was at 91 basis points, but after today, we may be touching that 100 basis point spread once again. The 10 year is under pressure as far as interest rates are going up. That means the bonds are going down in value. That is a, in, that inverted relationship is just, it's amazing that the stock market is, is really ignoring the bond market right now. But hey, you go with the trend and right now the trend is up. Uh, the US dollar, which is represented here by UUP, it was up just a little bit today, about 46 basis points. And that usually means that, um, that metals like gold and silver are going to move downward. And we do see that uh, U while UUP was up, we had GLD dropping over 1%. That's over 100 basis points. And silver was down one and three quarters percent on the day. But for gold, you can see here that we're in this downtrend, really an ABC pattern starting to move down, but we do have big support here at 180. All right, let me just make sure that uh, you guys can see those numbers there that we have 180 on as big support here on GLD. And um, really, if it breaks down below that, I don't know if 177.50 is going to hold. We could retest 170 on gold if we break below 180. It's definitely a long way down, and we have a few gaps back here, back in March, uh, that have not filled yet, and that might be a good opportunity for gold. So dollar up, gold down, and that's really kind of our overlook of the broader markets, okay? So in quick, summary hey, quick here. Quick quiz for you. Quick, yeah, quick quiz for you, yeah. Jeff. Of those six that we just went over, which one's your number one that you're pulling up every single day and you're looking at? Which one of those charts makes you the well, most excited? Well, right now I'm focused mostly on the equities market and on bonds, mm -hmm. really two. Okay. I can't focus on just one without kind of the other having a, an effect. All right. So, um, you know, because bonds really affect so much, you know, lending rates and mortgage rates and all, all those everyday things. Um, but, you know, I can't just focus on one market. I mean, there's energy and there's housing. And, I, mean, <laughs> I kind of caught you off guard there, but that was actually a really good explanation because, and when I, when I said to pick just one, it's so hard because you've really got to be watching a couple different ones, Jeff. And so that's kind of why you're well, I, who you are and why you trade what you do. It's like me. I, I probably just pull well, up one chart I, for the day and call it good. And that's it. Right. I mean, <laughs> I, I pick any, how about this? I pick anything that I can trade options on. How about that? There you go. I like that. I like that 100%. <laughs> What's so going on speaking around the world of today, trading, <laughs> So speaking of trading options, um, I heard, saw a report today. In fact, Ed, Ed Tilly from the SIBO was on today talking about uh, that options volume has doubled since 2019. Now, options volume has grown exponentially over the years, over the years, over the years. And to see that it's actually doubled over the past five years is, is pretty amazing. And um, uh, that, that was uh, just, that just shows you your ability to, to trade and that there's so much participation in the markets. Now, with that, that means that we have a lot of option volume around these big names that we like to trade, okay? And so the week headline was really that a couple of stocks have um, earnings this week. In fact, I'm focused on really Apple and Amazon coming up as the two biggest names uh, this week. And then also the jobs report that we have. Now that's kind of 
that's getting bar buried in the in all the noise a little bit, but we're still keeping an eye on that report. But Apple and Amazon are two two of the biggest. So before I talk about the other stocks that I'm kind of keeping an eye on uh, this week, you know, earnings are a big big event and when we have a week like this where we have over 2600 companies having earnings announcements there's a couple of delta neutral strategies that that really i love to play and that straddles and strangles now we call those breakout strategies where we anticipate we're, we're doing one of two things we're either anticipating the stock will break out or that the stock is going to consolidate and just be quiet all right, and so we focus with the breakout strategies on specific stocks that have the potential to break out. All right, now two recent trades that we've talked about are AT&T, which is T, and I want you to just look at this particular um, trade. We did a very inexpensive straddle on AT&T at the money, buying a call, buying a put, the debit turned out to be around $89, which means we could do a couple of contracts and still have our risk at a very minimum, okay, which is the name of the game, trade small, trade often, all right? And you can see here in the chart that the move for AT&T actually came prior to earnings. The actual earnings event was it, well, the stock didn't really move. And so instead, you know, we anticipated that, wow, with this big bounce, the stock might even bounce back down or race back up. And it didn't either. Okay. So the day after the earnings event, in fact, two days later, we, you know, we got out of this trade for just a $27 loss per contract. Okay. So very minimal loss. $27 per contract. So that's a loser. Now, what happens when these things do move and do move big? Well, another trade that we talked about was Omnicom. Now, if you recall, this was about two weeks ago. This was on our radar. In fact, it was highlighted in the little snapshot that I gave out. All right. Now, our debit here was a little bigger, so I just did one contract. But take a look at this. The stock doubled in one day essentially put we put on that straddle and the next day after market close we had earnings and the stock dropped over 10 percent okay in one uh, well the next morning and that generated a profit of 540 dollars in fact traders who actually stayed with it because we had a little time left in our options would have made even more through the puts because several days later, Omnicom traded downward, continued to trade down. But officially, we took that double, we took our money and ran. Now, you think about this for a moment. Whenever you have, if I go back to that AT&T trade for a moment, you can see that we had ultimately, with all three contracts, we had $267 at risk, but we only lost $81. On the Omnicom trade, we had $473 at risk and made $540 of profit. So when you start doing this with repetition and you have these winners that just keep producing numbers like this and your losers just don't lose very much, it can make for an incredibly powerful strategy, all right? And this is my kind of earnings play strategy where we do straddles and strangles. Right now we're hitting about 78% winners. So if you think about that for a moment, 78% winners and your winners are averaging around $500 and your losers are averaging around $100, that is an incredibly powerful strategy. All right, so to continue this with that sense, theme, yeah. I'm just kind of yeah, cutting in here because you're you're saying so many different things, strangle straddles, all this kind of stuff that I don't understand, as well as you know many other people probably that are watching this video don't understand. So this is one of those things where if you are watching this video, put in the comments below if you want Jeff to do a quick quick explanation of a straddle and a quick quick explanation of a of, of a strangle so that we can understand these things better. This might be some homework for you, Jeff, because we need this education 
just as much as uh, anybody else because you already know this stuff so well. But I would love to hear your guys' comments below on this stuff. Anyway, hop back into this. This is all good stuff. Thanks so you much. You know what? Jeff. This is in less than 60 seconds, I can give you a quick little summary because I have both of those charts pulled up here. That AT&T trade, this is called a straddle where you buy two you buy two options, one call, one put, and you do it at the money. In this case, you can see we have the 15 strike puts here, okay, both on the call side and the put side. That is called a straddle. Stock can move either up or down, we'll make money, but we lose money when the stock goes nowhere. Now on Omnicom, this one's slightly different because we did two different strikes right here. This is known as a strangle. Okay, whenever you don't use the same strikes and use two different strikes, in this case, we used 100 strike call and we bought the 97 and a half put. Okay, that creates what we call a strangle. Both trades can make money. And in this case, this one was the big winner. So that's a brief little uh, description of what a straddle and a strangle is. They're very easy. They're some of the earliest strategies that a trader would learn when they start trading options. They think it's the um, the holy grail, but in reality, you got to find the right stocks. And that's why subscribing to our newsletter for Delta Neutral Trader is such a great way to trade because I'm doing all that homework for you. All right. And lots of research goes into each and every one of these stocks. So let's kind of talk about the stocks that are on our list that have earnings up and coming this week because there's a bunch and out of 2,600 stocks, all right, I whittled it down to about eight, okay? And out of those eight, I can tell you, we're going to whittle it down even more. So here on the screen right now, you see that on, on Monday, we had over 300. Today, those numbers just keep going up and up and up. But here's the list on notable stocks to watch. We have Apple, we have Qualcomm, Caterpillar, we have Amazon, Amgen, AMB, PayPal. These are all stocks that just know, that are noteworthy, okay? But there's two on the list that really come to mind when I'm trading these types of, of, of strategies, both straddles and strangles. That happens to be AMD and PayPal. All right, so those are my two selections for the week. It's not hard. I don't even need to really show you the trade because it's you use at the money strikes wherever PayPal is trading. You look at the straddle and then you look at the strangle and you see which one you want might want to utilize. Same, same thing with AMD. You look at the straddle, you look at the strangle, which one might be better for you. Otherwise, by subscribing to Delta Neutral Trader, I can make those decisions for you, help you with those decisions, track the trades, follow them through the earnings event and let you know what we're doing and what, and what to do. So that is the case there. So really that's about it for this week. Very exciting stuff. It's an exciting week full of news and data and meh, politics. I don't really get into that, but, but uh, Brandon, anything else? That, comes to mind when we're going through no, that, that was, information that today a great session and a great little highlight there on the straddle and the strangle both of those jeff i liked that information because it helps me out it helps me visualize things quite a bit i would love to hear more on all these types of positions you put on and i think we're going to do that and you also do do that over in the little over an ewell trader where you can sign up for more courses right here from jeff um great great session today jeff i appreciate it Thanks, Brandon. Look forward to it'll be a great week this week. Looking forward to all the announcements. We'll do a summary next week and come with next week's offering because we got more to come. Everybody have a great trading week and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.